At this point in time, Transformers as a franchise has been around for 40 years. I personally became a fan in 2015 thanks to Generation 1 reruns, and with Legacy being in its third entry, Hasbro decided now was the time to not heavily rely on the franchise's first iteration as much as they're used to. The introduction to Legacy United's first wave was a testament to how exciting this year is probably going to be, while also hiding the fact that Hasbro's going through rough times because of their own doing. We saw faces we haven't seen in a while, and at the same time we knew were coming because leaks are the modern day equivalent of toy catalogs. This being my first time pre-ordering a wave of figures as they're revealed, because I'm finally sick of retailers getting waves 3-9 to nine months after the first two of the last line are being sold, so they'll just sit there because anyone who wanted one got them already. And so, three months and a New Year's Eve later, Amazon dropped off every figure in this wave onto my doorstep. Or at least the four I actually wanted. Not that the rest of the PulseCon reveals were horrible choices, they just didn't catch my eyes in the way these four did. We'll take a look at these in depth in a few minutes. However, for now, let's take a look at those other figures and see why I decided not to purchase them. It's cool that Hasbro's finally embracing Gobatron as a Cybertronian colony. However, these look too run-of-the-mill for my taste and could be a pain on the fingers like the fossilizers of Kingdom. If they ever make a diamond one, maybe I'll consider pulling the trigger. No one cares about their actual names, they were referenced as Rock Lords by the leakers and the designers, so we will acknowledge them as Rock Lords. Animated had weird but fascinating redesigns. Personally, I'm not a big fan because of all the lankiness, but hey, I did buy The Last Lion's Prowl for a reason, and Dare J. Wyatt illustrated a lot of childhood memories. Unfortunately, these figures don't do them justice in small ways. It's nothing too extreme, but the issues I can see definitely downgrades Primes into a bad collecting day purchase. And as for B, okay, I might get him eventually because I do like how this looks. Congrats to the Rescue Bot kids, but why would I need Bootleg Younger Prowl when I can have Bootleg Younger Prowl who's also a combiner limb? Okay, who? He's a re-release, so he doesn't count. These two aren't out at the time of this video's creation, though I still won't pick them up because Magmatron as a character is a cool idea trapped in a terribly executed body. Tyler Wade doesn't have the same problem, and while he's everything broadside wishes he was, I have no space for Titans at this point of my life, so maybe the Energon colors will change my mind. And with those out of the way, now I can talk about what I purchased, starting with a Wild Scoundrel. Beast Wars the Second is one of those shows I have an unnecessary fondness for even though I haven't seen it, and it's definitely due to the theme songs. However, my Leo Prime needed a friend eventually, so I decided to pair him up with these two Jokers from the Cyberverse toy line, and with Legacy giving us more obscure characters, Tasmanian Kid came with it. Having a wicked design with a unique to its era head and fake chest mouth, he has fat boo hands that can only hold specific items, however the 5mm ports are on his arms which can be used to hold his average size tail cannon. He's a charming poser but the fat boo hands limits his cool factor. The conversion is simply addicting, however the legs need to be twisted in a certain way and expect the brain panel to plug in not at all. Tasmanian Devil Mode continues the WFC tradition of giving Beast characters realistic animal sculpts, and this guy doesn't disappoint. He's also better than Rat Trap because his Beast Mode can articulate in ways he and Vertebrate wishes they could. Just don't expect to put him in a good peeing pose, oh wait, never mind. Ah, that was a lot of gay of adventuring. Well, Fang, turn around while I do my business on this rock. That's not a rock, you dumb shit! Overall, you should only buy this if you fall under four criteria. However, considering he's a $10 core figure who's what not Kingdom Hot Rod, your bank account won't take brain damage, and you guys get a pretty cool desk toy if I do say so myself. Our project is going to get us smoothly. Yes, indeed. We should run a few tests. Hey, it's no time for tests! Throw the switch now! It's working!
Okay, what the actual fuck? Megatron from Energon, Super Lincoln, you're in this region of the planet, is an outstandingly cool redesign placed into an outstandingly bad show. But I haven't seen it in full, so my full opinion on that will have to wait. But in the meantime, this miniature of the guy surprisingly captures all the details while leaving out certain ones due to the budget and size. He's equipped with these tiny shoulder pistols that are infatuated with popping off easily, and an even smaller version of the only good leader figure of the last line with a knife in its back. Adorable. Posability is a bit gift, but not infuriating until you get to the legs, because they were taking notes from the shoulder pistols and pop off easily as well. However, not as much, it's more noticeable in the transformation, which I can describe as bare bones but effective. Just wish the arms had somewhere to actually peg in. Space Jet is a space jet with a tank on top of it and missing a super mode. But at this size, this budget, and these times, Automorph isn't a thing anymore. While this guy isn't as sturdy as Tasmanian Kid, it's an outstanding miniature of a beloved design from an abysmal show. Pick him up for 10 bucks if you're interested, and I can't wait to buy this again in purple. Fan characters are nothing new to the world of fandom. However, when the creators of our favorite media calls upon the fans to create a character, you better believe they're ready to stand and deliver. Transformers, to my knowledge, gave us three which were created via fan polls that gave us the ability to choose a robot's color, alt mode, size, and most importantly, which genitalia it gets. Dript, a former Decepticon samurai who's also in need of a new toy, Victorion, the most worthless combiner of all time, and Windblade, a city speaker who Hasbro was so proud of, she became the go-to main girl character for a remainder of the decade, shoving her in every piece of media they could. The fanbase felt she was overbearing in terms of appearance, and she was, but admittedly I thought she was a fine addition and any interpretation of her was welcome, except for you. Legacy United being the first time this somewhat controversial character got a figure in a while. Her first figure was released in Thrilling 30. She doesn't look fun to mess around with if the images are telling me anything. The next figure was the 2015 Warrior Class figure, which in my opinion is the best looking out of all of them, and she has a scabbard to hold her sword. Wish I actually picked this up at the Walgreens I kept stocking for War for Cybertron exclusives. After that was the Titan's Return, which looks too bulky for my taste, but has the best face. And last until recently, to my knowledge, because I'm not counting third parties, the Warrior Class 2018 Cyberverse figure, which has a poor gimmick, no head articulation, and no sword. Bottom trash. Okay, fine, admittedly it's not that bad compared to Prime B and especially the Seekers. Her gimmick, if you think about it, is actually stress relieving and doesn't get in the way of her posability. Which, yes, is too basic for something to pretending to be $15, but again, her compatriots couldn't manage that right. Same can be said for the conversion, though if you don't realize there are creases in the legs for the thumbs to go in in jet mode, expect yourself to put the hands in wacky combinations in order to not see them. Which still won't save you from the joke of a jet mode with the exception of the cockpit. No, I'm not going to describe why this looks like an autistic pretending to be a junkyard when I know we can pretend to be better vehicles. Yeah, the truth is the Cyberverse toy line was dealt a bad hand, but amongst the trash lied a few... Well, I wouldn't call them diamonds, but there were a few exceptions and Wibblade was one of them, even if I just verbally pounded her. Get her on eBay if you want to, however, by the time I was done recording the last paragraph, you've already made your decision because the legacy figure is basically Wimblade Director's Cut. The LU keeps details the OG didn't have, while also leaving out unnecessary ones. The articulation is about the same with some post-Prime War swagger, and get this, she comes with her bloody sword, which can be pegged into the smaller ports on the thighs, and the flight stand, which is located on her... Uh... Uh... Yeah. Now, if you weren't convinced that this is just modded Windblade on Dreamcast, then the transformation should cement that fact, as the legs and feet have extra steps, the cockpit as well, and there's a reason why Stormbreaker is made out of fire and not the fantastic shape it usually is. It's a creative choice, but I'm definitely investing in a 3D pen. There are pegs on the legs that the hand can grab onto, which still looks ridiculous. However... Oh, chef's kiss. You can't deny this still makes the jet mode look more elegant than... Every one of her previous figures, not gonna lie. So, do I place a stamp of approval on this thing? I think the answer is pretty clear. Especially when you have to make excuses for previous releases. It's the first one ever made, it was made on an even lower budget. 
It's a headmaster. It's... Actually, I don't know why this is pretending to be more than what it's worth. This I can understand, but this turd, man, get that out of here. Trash rank for all the scout classes, even though I won't waste a single dime on them. Wait, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Is this the perfect Windblade? Maybe not, but it's certainly a damn good one. Transformers is no exception to having casualties in its main roster, but to make sure I'm not beating on a dead horse again, let's take a look at that. Now, being a show made during a time where computer-generated animation was still in its infancy, I can only imagine having too many characters on screen would add more money to the pile, so Quartz Party it is. Two of them being kind of justified and my first choices to go. One of them being the most memorable episode of the franchise. Six of them being victims of circumstances. And the last two are a bit complicated. Tigertron, a warrior who admires nature more than anything else. And Air Razor, a warrior who switches which bathroom she uses depending on what dub you're watching. These two were captured by an evil alien plant in the second season, which leads them to not appear until the third to last episodes, which, thanks to the power of love, is merged into Tigerhawk. A godlike entity sent by the Vok to kill Megatron because they were done with him screwing over the timeline with no protection. He eventually joins the Maximals after they get him to Wusa, only to be killed in the episode after because the show team didn't know the figure got cancelled until the toy team told them it wasn't, but at that point it was too late to animate the scene because, again, CGI more expensive back then. This figure being made four decades after the last one, and it doesn't live up to its standards. Because it's better. Kind of. Or not. Look, I don't have the original, so unlike Windblade, I'm gonna have to judge this thing on its own. Generally speaking with this trilogy, if a character doesn't originate from G1, they'll be retrofitted into a G1 style. As a non-G1-er, I didn't really mind, but to other fans, especially ones of Prime, this was annoying. Luckily, the designers were allowed to stop this sentiment. However, this rule never applied to the Beast Wars characters, and Tiger Hawk is no exception with that crap-eating grim and a thousand-yard stare. Posing feels a tiny bit limited, but not distractingly limited, especially when you factor in his powerful wings and just as powerful back cannons. Not to mention his feather swords, because they're just as useful to him as Wimplay's hair crest as a weapon. So not at all. Needless to say, there's a lot to love when it comes to the robot mode, and only the robot mode, because conversion is where everything falls apart for me. It's not as infuriating as a certain Prime character I know, but pulling the arms always feels like the last time I'm gonna be able to do it. Getting the turkey legs out of robot mode isn't impossible, it's getting them back in that's annoying. And this thing behind his head loves to pop off when you want to turn it, and plugging in the arms to this thing isn't as satisfying as you think it is. However, when you're finished with that pain, the beast mode comes together well once you can find out how to put these two pieces together. The wings are just as majestic as bot mode, and the tiger head is a tiger head. Well, if you're a Beast Wars completionist and you don't have this yet, I'm honest to God shocked. But for those who don't appreciate the beasties as much as others, yeah, I won't blame you if you skip out on this one. If you pick it up, you won't be disappointed, but you could definitely do better with $50, and their name are Dragon and or Armatatron. So in conclusion, the figures of Legacy United's first wave are splendid additions to an already unique trilogy. I say this not buying everything else, but if they're as good as these guys or not, I'd like to read your experiences with them in the comments. As for what I ultimately liked out of my own selection, I was worried Wimblade was going to be a hot mess, but now she's fighting for a position as one of my favorite figures. However, Tasmanian Kid's not letting her be one without a fight. Ultimately, I like Energon Megs as a design only. As a toy, he's fine, but even he knows he's not beating his previous form. And Tigerhawk you should only deal with if you feel like you want to spend money on him. He's not terrible, but there's just too much wrong with the transformation to put my full stamp of approval on him. Well, there you have it. As I was recording, Wave 2 just got officially announced. And I can already see a Nevermind, a Maybe Replacement, and a What the Hell Took You Too So Long. But my thoughts on them will have to be for another day and another format. Please consider liking and subscribing if you liked what you saw here. Thank you all for watching, and until we meet again, may whatever time or place treat you well.
Yes, I do know these guys and these guys aren't from the same planet. I've been out of action for a long time, and I need that algorithm synergy, okay?